be nice. So, I'm going to make you help me out. You guys can feel free to participate if you want. Otherwise, I want to participate. Just watch and be loud when I'm on TV. Alright, what I want you guys to do on your index card, real quick, 60 seconds. Okay. Make a list of every social studies class in middle school and high school. I have my content check. What? Any social studies course in middle school or high school? That students take. Yeah. Any course in the social studies curriculum? Okay. Middle school, high school. Middle school, high school. It's good stuff to do. Are you pretty What are they doing? Ninth grade? Just middle and high school. What about college? Nope. Or, oh, I was just making sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, but we're the same because we do American Lit in 11th grade and Brit Lit in 12th oh. grade. And, and the intake like comes from the world. Yeah. 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 It didn't work. <laughs> I thought the camera said another camera that, you know, they would. Really? Yeah. Oh, I had Dr. Swartz. She got fired for cussing me out. All right, all right. Let's uh, let's start making a list here real quick. Oh, right. U.S. Uh, history. U.S. history. Where? Middle and high school. Civics and economics. <laughs> Middle school, yes. Okay. I have gone to high school. And I have poli sci. Government. How did I pick up? I had American comparative Wow. I have government as a lot? Distinct from poli sci. World history. Geography. I didn't say it went in high school. Sociology. What about here? Anything else over here? World. History. I had geography. I had world. Sociology. I had world history. You won't. You look so Okay, so that's good. <laughs> you go. You're good? You go. Is that the metro? I'm sorry. We're going to come back to this less than a couple minutes. So, just hold on to it. Hold on to it. All right. I just want to give you guys a quick background for who I am, where I came from. All right, I came to Virginia Tech in 2003 in engineering school. Early decision, early entrance. <laughs> I was good to go. Chemical engineering, I make a lot of money. Doing God knows what, I still don't really know what I was going to be doing with that. But I decided that I didn't want to do that anymore. Uh, doing my homework one night, realized that I was forecasting this experience ahead to my future job, which would probably consist of sitting in a cubicle, doing the same thing that I was doing at that very moment, September 2004, crunching numbers, making conversions. Uh, figuring out how much sodium nitrate to put into a uh, reactor to then produce X amount of heat, etc. I just got really bored of that and signed on one to uh, my passion for history and for teaching. So that's kind of the process by which I moved from science oriented career choice to teaching. Um, like I said, I've been here since 2003. Um, finishing up my seventh year. I uh, completed the master's degree in history last spring. So on top of uh, the content knowledge that I'm bringing to the classroom, I'm also bringing this program here, curriculum instruction, trying to leverage that content knowledge into meaningful experiences for my students. Um, what I want to focus on in my uh, presentation today is just a few big areas where I can observe growth in myself and in my thought process towards uh, the social studies classroom. The first area I want to look at is uh, kind of in my, my approach, I guess my pedagogy, there, $20 word right there, I don't know what means. pedagogy with a capital. All right. I was an instructor in the history department for one semester while I finished up my master's in history. I taught a course called History of the Modern World, um, and I essentially based my entire class on giving 75-minute lectures Tuesday and Thursday mornings. Um, what I did was I created a PowerPoint 
there's one example of uh, a lesson on the Spanish Civil War. Um, my PowerPoints typically I try to combine a little bit of text with a wide range of visuals. Uh, this was a uh, very poor attempt at humor. Um, but just to kind of bring in the visual learners, uh, the auditory learners, <coughs> you can see uh, most slides, um, you can see down here, well, you can't see them there, um, but I've got the little audio icon in the corner, which indicates that I'm bringing some kind of auditory source or even if it's just some kind of background ambiance type of experience. Um, so bringing in a wide range of, of different types of media uh, to portray uh, the subject. But at the same time, what I was doing was I was lecturing for 75 minutes, which is very easy for me to do on a topic that I'm very interested in. And that was kind of the best <coughs> way that I learned uh, in the social studies classroom myself. And I just kind of assumed that that would be the best way to go about it. Um, and this is before I had any kind of training in uh, constructivist principles, uh, newer, more modern pedagogy uh, in social studies. Now, in between teaching in the history department and um, kind of entering this program or kind of refining my approach to the classroom, uh, I encountered the term constructivism for the first time. And I specifically remember hearing it in uh, Dr. Garrison's School in America class. I had no idea what it was. Uh, we didn't even really talk about it that much. Two students were having a debate or a discussion of some kind about constructivism. And I just kind of was like, oh, that's interesting. I uh, tuned it out. Uh, to this day, I have not uh, looked up a definition of constructivism. But I kind of, I kind of prefer it that way because it allowed me to actually, looking back, it makes a lot of sense that I learned about constructivism by following constructivist principles and kind of seeing it in action and kind of getting my own little understanding of what what it's all about. And I don't think I'll ever go to a textbook on education or schooling and look up a formal definition because I, I don't want my idea of what it is to kind of be tarnished in that sense. Um, so then moving into kind of the lessons I started developing as a member of this cohort, um, I just want to look at another example of a PowerPoint I created um, in the fall on the Persian Wars. Now, I'm still very much inclined to follow a lecture format. But what I learned, and what you can see actually, is that there's not a lot of difference in the type of PowerPoint that I create. There's a lot of images. Um, video clips, short video clips, um, images and, and, and auditory sources. Um, where I grew and where I kind of adopted these constructivist principles in a lecture format, of course I do a lot more things than just give lectures, but I think the best way to see my growth is that in sticking with this format, um, what you can also see is that along with 